Okay, good morning, everyone. Welcome to BC 308, our um, course on uh, Revelation and Daniel. Thank you for joining the class today. Uh, let's take a moment to pray and we will get started. Could somebody please pray with the class and then we will start. Uh, let's pray. Uh, Father, we thank you for this opportunity. We come together before your presence and ask, oh God, that you would speak to us today and help us to understand your word a little more deeper. And we pray that you would minister to us, help us to really focus and to really get a grab of uh, Revelation and Daniel as we are entering into the next chapters in Revelation. I pray that you would minister to us, God. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you. All right. So we paused at the end of uh, chapter 5. So just quickly summarize Revelation 4 and 5, what we said, and then we will move forward. Um, so what we, has, what we have said is Revelation chapters 4 and 5, is giving us uh, an insight into heaven after the rapture of the church. The reason we say that is in Revelation chapter 4, verse 1, the Lord says, John, come up here, and I will show you things which must take place. That means these are things out in the future. These are not things that were happening then, during John's time. Uh, these are things that were going to take place. We said that. Secondly, chapters 4 and 5, we are seeing uh, the, uh, the elders seated around the throne. And uh, they have received their robes of righteousness, their crowns, and they are seated on the throne. And uh, we said that, well, it means it's it's showing us that they have received their rewards. They have received, uh, you know, the 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 place of honor. But Peter has written, First Peter chapter five verses one to four. He says, "When the chief shepherd shall appear, then we talking to the elders." So First Peter five one he says, "I'm writing to the elders." Verse four he's talking about the reward. He says, "Then." We will receive a crown of glory which we will not which will not fade away right so that means as elders uh, when are we receiving the crown of glory when he shall appear not when we die and go to heaven but when he shall appear so there has to be the appearing of the Lord subsequent and after to that uh, his appearing then is you're going to receive the reward uh, for being an elder for being a good shepherd for being a good you know whatever God's called us to do so that is also telling us that this rewards ceremony or the giving of the awards rewards is happening after the Lord appear, appearing. So we're seeing that in chapter five, we are, and, and we're seeing in chapter four, the worship going on in heaven. Chapter five is very uh, interesting because we are seeing also in chapter five, this great multitude of people who've been, uh, 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 redeemed from every tribe, tongue, and nation. They are in their robes, and they're worshiping God. So there again is another picture of the raptured church, the church which is believers from all over the world, uh, every tribe, tongue, and nation standing and worshiping God. In chapter 5, something very interesting happens. At that time, uh, they're saying, you know, there's a scroll. Who's going to open the scroll? Who's worthy to open the scroll? And so uh, it's almost like, Nobody's there except when the Lord Jesus comes. And he's, he's represented there in, in, in front of the throne as a lion of the tribe of Judah. He comes, he takes a scroll, he opens, which is signifying that now these things are going to be fulfilled. So the scroll is open, and then it's almost like the, you know, the, 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 the bell is, is rung saying, time for all these things to be fulfilled. Right, um, 
So, okay, so I see an interesting question in the chat. Uh, John is asking, when we talk about the elders, as it includes the apostles of the Lamb, can we safely say that John might be seeing himself too, as this is a sight in the future? Is that an interesting question? I never thought of that. Uh, but obviously, uh, John is one of the 12 apostles, so <laughs> one of the thrones uh, must be for him. And uh, yeah, it's quite an interesting question. Uh, I mean, there is no indication here that John has recognized himself there. So my guess is that God would have not revealed that to John. Uh, otherwise, you know, he immediately put that, and I saw myself standing <laughs> among the 12 on the right side or the left side, wherever, along with the 24. I mean, he would have put a big <laughs> note there. Very, very interesting question. I never thought of it. Uh, so definitely, definitely, John, being part of the 12 apostles, uh, would be, I, I don't know which side, but on one of the sides, because the other, the others, uh, you know, are the Old Test 12 Old Testament prophets, as we saw. Um, so the answer to the question is yes, John would have been among the 24. But my guess is God would not have disclosed that, right? So it's it's quite obvious that John knows that these are elders, but it's likely he didn't know their names. Others, I think he would have written down, right? If he had seen Moses, Elijah, I'm just, I don't know, I'm just making this up. If he had seen, you know, starting, let's start from, you know, maybe from Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, I don't know who all, but David, and maybe, you know, we said, yeah, Moses, you know, whoever, who, whoever else, I don't know. Uh, uh, it's quite possible he would have written their names down, you know. Uh, and so if he, he saw himself there, uh, he would have written the names down. So I'm, 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 I'm assuming, I'm assuming, this is just a guess, that he recognizes these are elders, but he doesn't recognize who they are. Uh, and so he doesn't put their names down. I mean, that's how I would look at it. But, you know, we we can't uh, back it up with scripture. Right? So, uh, yeah. So the Lord Jesus opens the scroll. And that's saying, okay, these events are going to start. Right? And along with that, there is this amazing worship happening in heaven. I just want to point out uh, about the harp and the bow. It's a very interesting picture um, that we see in verse 8 of Revelation 5. And I, I, I know we've read, read Revelation chapter 5. Uh, just a few things to point out. Uh, Revelation 5 verse 8. You see, uh, Revelation 5, 8, he, so John is seeing the worship going on in heaven. The Lord has taken the scroll, the four and living creatures, and the 24 elders fell down before the Lamb, each having a harp, that is the instrument they're playing, and a golden bowl that's filled with incense, which are the prayers of the saints. It's very interesting. Um, these elders, they're before the throne. They're each of them at this point, at this point in verse 8, Revelation 5 8, they're having a harp. Okay, we understand that. They're playing uh, on their harp or the instrument, and they're having a bowl. It's filled with incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they're singing a song, and they're worshiping Jesus, they're praising the Lord. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I just want to point out one good thing and one not good thing. The good thing is, uh, harp, praise, bowl, prayer. So, both praise and prayer 
is part of what we bring before the throne. You know, so you might you might have heard some people, you know, they name their ministry, ministries or ministry, harp and bowl ministry. So that's a nice name. Uh, it's just saying there is praise and there is prayer, right? Harp and bowl. Uh, so the, the nice thing we can learn is that we bring both praise and prayer or intercession. We bring worship and prayer, praise and worship, prayer and intercession, we bring before the throne. So all of us, in one sense, should be up and bowl worshippers or up and bowl people before the throne. So there is praise and worship, there is prayer and intercession. That's the that's nice thing. The not nice thing I want to just mention here is the, 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 the wrong deduction. I'm just mentioning this so that we can be aware. We should not use the scripture to say to to use we should not use this to say that I can direct I need to direct my prayer through the elders to the Lord. That's the wrong thing we must avoid. You know, somebody can say, hey, look, 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 look. The elder is carrying the bowl and he's offering it to the th to the Lord who's on the throne. And it is saying here, he's carrying a bowl full of the prayers of the saints. So I should not wrongly conclude that I need to offer my prayer to the any one of the elders to the who are, you know jo, I don't know who John or whoever one of the twelve apostles or you know I, I, it it is a wrong conclusion because the rest of scriptures directly tell us whatever you ask the Father in the name of Jesus you pray our Father who art in heaven Jesus always taught us. You pray directly to the Father. You pray to the Father. You, you don't have to send your prayer through the elders. You don't have to pr send your prayer to the fa throne through somebody else. No, no, no. You're going to the Father in the name of Jesus. Okay? So that's the wrong thing. It's just showing us that this picture is just showing us because we always have to interpret what we are seeing with the rest of Scripture. So this picture is showing us that the elders are offering praise and prayer, or praise and worship, prayer and intercession before the throne, which is, which is a good thing. We, that's a good thing. We, we bring prayer, praise and prayer before the throne. Uh, but it does not mean that our prayers are going to the elders first and then going to Jesus. That, that is the wrong conclusion, and we should be careful not to do that. Okay? Uh, but our prayers are going to the Lord, in the name of Jesus, and uh, it's just this is just a picture that the, the that the elders are offering prayer, praise and prayer. So now we're going to go into chapter six. Chapter six is a picture of things happening here on earth. So there are things happening in heaven, which the elders are in the throne room, there is worship, all of these things are happening. The scroll has been opened, so that means here on earth, uh, things are starting to happen. What is the first thing we see happening? We see, we see the seals, the Lamb of God, Jesus is opening seven seals. And as each seal is being opened, something is happening here on earth. Right? And each of these is basically this is the start of the tribulation. So, you know, reading this is is is, is, is going to you know, which is we're just going to read a lot of the judgment, uh, destruction that's going to happen here on earth. Uh, it's not necessarily uh, pleasant to read, but it is the judgment of God happening here on earth, starting from the beginning of the tribulation. So let's uh, re read uh, in, uh, in little portions. 
So we'll read verses 1 to 1 to 8, uh, Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 to 8, and then we will read uh, af after that. So somebody could read Revelation 6, 1 to 8. Revelation uh, chapter 6, verses 1 to 8. Now I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard one of the four living creatures saying with a voice like thunder, Come and see. And I looked, and behold, a white horse. He who sat on it had a book, and a crown was given to him, and he went out conquering and to conquer. When he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, Come and see. Another horse, fiery red went up and it was granted to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth and that people should kill one another and there was given to him a great sword when he opened the third seal i heard the third living creature say come and see so i looked and behold a black horse and he who sat on it had a pair of scales in his hand and I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a denarius, and three quarts of barley for a denarius, and do not harm the oil and the wine. Yeah. Um, so verse, verse 8, 7 and 8, please. Seven and eight. When he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. Hmm. Okay, thank you. So, now the seals are being opened. What is interesting is, um, the first four seals, each of them is depicted by a horse. There's a white horse, there's a red horse, there's a, a, a black horse, and there is a pale horse. So you're wondering, like, oh, what is this? Why is God using, uh, like, each of these four seals, four seals that are opened, uh, it's showing a horse, the moving of a horse. Uh, why is God using this image? And we will talk about, you know. Uh, so the horse is a symbol of strength and speed. Right? So so we shouldn't think like, oh, okay, so this is where we are uh, using things figuratively as opposed to literally. So it doesn't mean like uh, the seal is open, some, you know, like a scroll, there's a seal, the seal is open, and suddenly there's a horse running. <laughs> You know, it's more like okay, it's a, it's it's figurative. It's telling us something about what is going to happen at that time. So that means these things, these four things, coming on a horse, meaning these four things are going to happen with strength and with speed. It's going to happen forcefully. It's going to happen very fast. Four horses: white horse, red horse, black horse pale horse the first seal is talking about a man uh, it says there is somebody sitting on that white horse this is revelation 6 1 and 2 okay. and he has a bow and a crown and he's conquering and to conquer so this is the revealing of the Antichrist. Revelation 6, verse 2. So why do you say that? Because we saw in, 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 in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 that the man of sin, the son of perdition, he has to be revealed. He has to be made known. So he says, yeah, uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 was... Uh, three, yeah, three and four. It says, "Let no one deceive you by any means, for that day will not come unless a falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, that is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God." 
right? So the man of sin is revealed. So there is almost like an unveiling. This man is coming onto the scene. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. So Revelation 6, 2 is the fulfillment of that, this man of sin. So why do you? Because he's coming on a white horse. Who else comes on a white horse? Jesus comes. But Jesus comes on a white horse in Revelation 19. And he comes from heaven. Jesus, when he comes to Revelation 19, he's also coming as a conquering king. He comes and he defeats all of his enemies, the enemies of Israel, Revelation 19. But this man on a white horse is different. He's not the Christ. Therefore, we say he is the Antichrist. He comes, Revelation 6.2, at the beginning of the tribulation, he comes like a man of peace. And he has been given the authority to conquer, to, to really take people in his control. Right? So that's how we conclude that this man is the Antichrist. He's like the Christ. He's coming on a white horse. He's coming to conquer. But he is not the Christ. Because the Christ comes in Revelation 19. He also comes riding on a white horse. He comes when he destroys all his enemies. He comes to conquer, to rule the nations with the rod of iron. This Revelation 6 2 is a different person. He's coming on a white horse, like the Christ, but he's the Antichrist. And he's gaining influence. So on earth, everything begins with the man of sin being revealed. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 3 and 4. But what has happened for the man of sin to be revealed? He who restrains has been taken out of the way. The church has been taken out of the way. So therefore we are saying the church is in heaven now. The, the, all the believers are in heaven now. And this man of sin is revealed. The next three, white hor uh, next three horses, um, the red horse, the black horse, the pale horse, are speaking to us about things that are going to happen on the earth. The red horse, verses 3 and 4, are talking about war beginning on the earth. That is, there is going to be violence, there is going to be war. So, very interesting. The Antichrist comes on the scene, he's going, extending his influence, and the, the, the tribulation is beginning, with this increased conflict everywhere. This is peace from the earth. People should kill one another. And there was given to this, uh, to him, a great sword. So there is conflict uh, being uh, erupting in numerous places all around the earth. Third seal, there is uh, scarcity of food, or you could even say famine. Because now, uh, this this black horse is symbol of somebody holding um, a scale, and in those days, scales were used to measure out food. Sometimes in some parts of India, if you go to the store, uh, especially in, I think, in rural parts, maybe in the city also, I'm not sure. If you go to buy food, they will measure it in scales. Right? They'll put one side, they'll put weights, and the other side, they'll put rice, or they will put some grain or something. They'll measure that, and that's how they give you the food. So one kg rice, okay? One side, the weight, and one, they put the rice on. So that scale is what is pictured here um, in, uh, in, in uh, the, the third seal. But it's a black horse, meaning it's not uh, good. There's the scarcity. It's talking about food becoming very expensive, and he's saying, don't even touch the oil and the wine. Hey, that means you can't even have access to oil and wine. Uh, it, food has become very scarce. So that is the third. So there is conflict, the scarcity of food, or shortage of food, or you know, you could even say maybe it's 
famine, there's, it's not crops are not growing. Then the fourth seal, there is death. Uh, this is the pale horse. Uh, it's represented by the pale horse. Uh, death is going all over the earth. And it says here, 25% of Earth's population is wiped out. You know, it says here, um, a fourth of the Earth, they're killed with sword, hunger, and by the beasts of the Earth. So 25%, fourth of the Earth's population are dying. And there are many reasons. There is, they've been dying because of violence they are dying because of hunger and they're dying because of the beasts of the earth now that's something to think very interesting because it says the animals are now coming to kill people now if you look at it uh, in some parts uh, i'm not saying everywhere but in some parts a man has so encroached on territory that leopards, bears, are uh, all these wild animals. And I'm saying leopards and bears because I know leopards here in in in, in, in Bangalore also, Bangalore city outskirts. Um, they are coming in. It's, it's almost like we have encroached so much on their territory they're coming in you know and uh, they, they suddenly people find leopards in an apartment complex roaming around uh, of course it's very dangerous uh, so you know uh, it's 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 like you know we had, we come into that place now and uh, it says here yeah, the beasts of the earth are going to kill people so something's going to happen that's going to cause widespread uh, death on the earth. Right? So we're just beginning to see, this is the beginning of the seven years of tribulation. But at the same time, Revelation 6, there are going to be, there's going to be a lot of spiritual things happening. Because a lot of people are going to turn to faith in Jesus. So, the rapture has taken place. Uh, the redeemed saints have gone into heaven. They are in heaven. They are worshipping God. Revelation 4 and 5. The elders are there. The saints are there. They are worshipping God. On earth, people are, not everybody, but many people are going to turn to the Lord. But it's going to be very difficult for them to follow Jesus. They are going to be martyred. We'll see this in Revelation 6. If Let's read, please, uh, verses 9 to 17, 9 to the end. Revelation 6, 9 to the end. When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? Then a white robe was given to each of them, and it was said to them that they should rest a little while longer, until both the number of their fellow servants and their brethren who would be killed as they were, was completed. Sixth seal. I, I looked when he opened the sixth seal, and behold, there was a great earthquake, and the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became like blood, and the stars of heaven fell to the earth as a fig tree drops its late figs, when it is shaken by a mighty wind. Then the sky receded as a, as a scroll when it is rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. And the kings of the earth, the great men, the rich men, the commanders, 
the mighty men, every slave and every free man hid him themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains and said to the mountains and rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. For the great day of his wrath has come and who is able to stand. Amen. Amen. So, the next two seals. So, fifth seal. John is saying that there are the souls of those who had been slain for the word of God and the testimony which they held. Very interesting. Why? Because he has already seen in chapter 5 that the redeemed are actually standing and worshipping God. Right? Revelation 5. Uh, it says, you know, was uh, was uh, nine the redeemed are from every tribe and tongue and nation. They're worshiping God, but this is a different set of people in Revelation six nine because they are not standing before the throne and worshiping God. This is a different set of people. What has happened to them? They are those who had been slain become martyrs. So, there's a difference. Revelation 5, these are the redeemed saints, the raptured saints. Everybody's received glorified bodies. They're standing before the throne, worshipping God. Tribulation has started on the earth. And there are people who have turned to faith in Jesus. They have now become saints or believers in Jesus. And these people are now being killed. And their souls are coming up into the throne room of God, before the altar of God. And those are whom we are seeing here in Revelation 6, um, 9 to 11. They are receiving a white robe and God is saying, you know, uh, so they are crying out, Lord, how long are you going to avenge our blood? I mean, we've, all these people have been martyred. And he says, okay, you wait. Uh, you know, there are going to be more people who are going to be killed. Uh, there's this, so you just have to be patient, and God will avenge. God will, um, you know, uh, will avenge uh, those who are being martyred. So he says, you wait a little longer. It's going to happen. But Revelation six nine to eleven is telling us that there will be lots of people who are being martyred for their faith. It says, if for the word of God and for the testimony which they held during the tribulation. So will there be people who will become believers during the tribulation? Yes. They will die. They will be killed for their faith. Yes. And their souls are coming up into the throne of God. And God is saying, okay, you be patient. More people are going to happen. It's just a little while. More people are going to be killed. It's, it's a little while longer. The sixth seal is telling us about great earthquakes and look at the sign very carefully. The sun will become black and the moon will become like blood. Now, that terminology, that language is used in connection with Joel's prophecy. Remember Joel prophesied in Joel chapter 2, 28, 29. He said, in the last days, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams upon my servants and my handmaidens. I will pour out my spirit in those days. And the sun will be darkened. And the moon will become blood red. And I will show signs in the heavens above and on the earth beneath. Okay. But that is connected to the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And it is connected with the last days. And that language, the sun being darkened and the moon being blood red, is now, it will be repeated twice, at least two times in the book of Revelation. First, we're seeing it here. Revelation 6.12. The earth, there's, the sun is becoming black and the moon is becoming blood. 
and there's a signs in the heavens above the stars are falling to the earth and to the earth beneath right so is literally literally revelation 6:12 is fulfilling Joel's prophecy but it is connected to the outpouring of the holy spirit it's one prophecy so what i want to say here is that although it is not stated in revelation 6 about the outpouring of the holy spirit what i want to say here is that because this prophecy is actually part of the bigger prophecy of joel there is going to be or we can say safely say there will be a moving of the holy spirit continuing through the book of revelation it's connected it's one prophecy in the last days i will do all of these things that's the outpouring of the holy spirit and then there are going to be these Term, tremendous signs happening. The sun will be darkened, the moon will become blood red. I will show signs in the heavens above and on the earth beneath. Well, it's happening here. So there also has to be the movement the, of the Holy Spirit, which we will see in the next chapter, Revelation 7. Okay. So these signs are happening, and it is interesting to see the reaction of the people of the earth which is verses 15 to 17, Revelation 6. The kings of the earth, uh, the rich men, the commanders, the mighty men, and everybody, every slave and every free man, they're hiding themselves. And uh, they are saying to the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him who sits on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. What does this mean? It means this. That people are recognizing something unusual is happening. People are recognizing that this is the judgment of God. Because it's, they're saying, hide us from the face of Him who sits on the throne from the wrath of the Lamb. People are recognizing. Rich, powerful people, mighty people and everybody free men everybody people are recognizing hey there's this sense that we are in this time of god's judgment we are in the tribulation we are there but sadly they're not repenting and you will see this again coming up in uh, i think in uh, chapter uh, eight or nine we'll see this one more time where even though people are recognizing that this is God doing something, they're not repenting. What are they crying? They're, they're saying rocks for, I mean, they're trying to self-destruct rather than repent. So we are seeing both things happen during the tribulation. We are seeing people who will believe and will be killed for the word of God and the testimony of Jesus. And then we will see, we are seeing people who are recognizing that this is the work of God. I mean, God's judgment is being poured out on the earth, and this is like we are, we, we, you know, this is Bible being fulfilled. They're recognizing this, you know, that God is there and God is, you know, uh, judging the earth, but they're not repenting. They, they're telling rocks fall on us. They they don't still don't want to turn to God. They want to die. Just go away. Um, so in the tribulation, there will be people who turn to the Lord, and there will be people who still continue to reject the Lord. We'll see this again, uh, yeah, repeated. So while these seven seals, uh, there's one, the, the seventh seal has to be opened, but while these seals have been opened and all these things are beginning to happen on the earth, the Lord reveals to John that he has a special assignment for the Jews on the earth during the tribulation. 
And again, this is very interesting to think about because we are now in the church age from the day of Pentecost till the rapture. It's the church age. God's dealings is primarily in and through the church. And as Paul writes in Romans chapters 9 to 11, God has not neglected the Jews. But in this time, he's working through the Gentiles, the, 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 the believers everywhere. And as we come, so the, come to the end of the church, eh, the church is taken out of the way, then God has a special assignment for the Jews during those seven years of tribulation. So that's what we see in chapter 7. That for some reason, and, and there's, no, there's no explanation given, God selects 144,000 Jews. We just refer to them as uh, these 144,000 Jewish servants. For some reason, so somebody says, "Why 144,000?" I don't know. It's 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 just what the scriptures say. Well, from twelve tribes, I mean twelve thousand from twelve tribes. Uh, why not? You know, some other number, like why not two hundred thousand, whatever, whatever. You know, this is what the Bible says. He marks a hundred and forty-four thousand Jewish believers to serve him during the tribulation so we're going to read Revelation chapter 7 and uh, uh, we'll just read verses 1 to 4 uh, we don't need to uh, read the verses 5 through 8 somebody could read please Revelation 7 1 to 4 After these things, I saw four angels standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, on the sea, or on any tree. Then I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God. And he cried with a loud voice to the four angels, to whom it was granted to harm the earth and the sea, saying, do not harm the earth, the sea, or the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God on their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000 of all the tribes of the children of Israel were sealed. Hmm. So, we come to a particular point where there is a momentary stillness on the earth. So the picture, Revelation 7, 1, the picture of four angels standing at the four corners of the earth. Now, remember, when you say four corners, don't think of the earth as a flat table. It's just saying four directions. And he's holding the four winds. So the four winds are a picture when you look at them in Scripture. Uh, are a picture of movement happening. Some, uh, sometimes, or many of, very often, it's in context with the movement of God. God is doing something. So here we're coming to the point where the four winds are held, meaning things are still. Nothing's going to happen. So there's a momentary pause because something special has to happen. What is it? 144,000 from the tribes of the children of Israel have to be marked on their foreheads. These are the servants of God. That, so these 144,000 people are going to be marked by God to serve God during the tribulation. These people are from the tribes of the children of Israel. Are they they're Jewish people. So what can we say here? There is the seal. So what is the seal? 
uh, from scripture on the New Testament scripture especially the seal represents two things one it represents the mark of the presence of the Holy Spirit today we as believers we are sealed by God what is it the Holy Spirit is given to us as the seal we are sealed by the Spirit another uh, another picture of being sealed is the name of God so two things in the New Testament the seal the mark of God is the Holy Spirit and the name of the Lord these are the only two things uh, that are represented by the seal of God being put on us so it is safe to say here that God is putting his Holy Spirit and his name on these people they're going to carry the name of the Lord that's what the seal of God is uh, 144,000 Jewish believers what are they going to do they are servants of the Lord they're going to serve God and and and, and you know verses 5 to 8 is showing you know 12,000 from each of the tribes uh, the only the only point to note is that two of the tribes uh, are missing I think it's um, uh, I forget which two of the original tribes are missing but instead the two sons of Joseph are included at uh, the tribe sorry the tribe of Joseph and uh, Manasseh uh, I think uh, are included here replacing the other two tribes and so uh, so the uh, again the question is you know why are those two tribes replaced by Joseph and uh, um, uh, Manasseh uh, so uh, uh, I, again we don't know the the reason so sometimes Bible commentaries would say maybe because these two tribes uh, did not fight or did not engage in conflict for Israel maybe God left them out or maybe because of some other uh, some other reason but uh, that's the thing that we note here and that mentioning the 12 tribes Two of the original tribes are left out and they're replaced by Joseph and uh, Manasseh. Um, so 144,000 Jews are sealed by God to serve God during the tribulation. And the seal represents the Holy Spirit and the name of Jesus. So once again we say that there is indication here that the Holy Spirit is at work during the tribulation. So he's not been taken out of the earth. Because these people, if they're going to serve God during the tribulation, they definitely need the empowering of the Holy Spirit. They cannot serve God, serve the Lord, without the empowering of the Holy Spirit. I mean, if any time they needed to be anointed by God, it's there in the tribulation. That's, you know, so it would be almost contradictory to say, hey, this is the worst time to be on earth, but I'm calling you to serve, and I'm not giving you the Holy Spirit. No, 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 no. The logical thing would be, this is the toughest time. I'm calling you to serve. I'm going to make sure you have the Holy Spirit to empower you. So, here again, another reason why we are saying the Holy Spirit is going to be active on the earth during the tribulation, and therefore it's the church that has been raptured and taken out of the way. Uh, so, we'll come back, we'll continue from here, uh, continue to uh, uh, continue in chapter 7. Um, yeah, and I, and I see Jeffina's uh, question on the chat. We will pick it up right after the break. Right? And if you have any questions, please, please feel free to uh, bring it up as we uh, look at these things. Uh, let's come back in 10 minutes, please. Thank you.